Okay, so we have this article right here. It was written the 2nd of October, 2023, because this is the BBC and we read everything in British. Um, this was written by Jonathan Amos, a science correspondent. It was written at uh, 5.59 a.m., apparently. I don't know what time that is over here. That's not my business. The James Webb Telescope makes jumbo discovery of planet-like objects in Orion. This is an image of... What did it say? Orion Nebula, Mike 42. It's 1,400 light years from Earth, and it looks like a smudge. It's a lot of greens. I think the, black, the dark horse is somewhere in here. That could be wrong. Because I really can't tell. I haven't really studied Orion too much. But I want to imagine it's near the closest spot where there's a whole bunch of fucking light. Maybe? I don't... Get out of the way here. Or maybe that's it. I don't really know. But it's somewhere in here. Let's see. Jupiter-sized planets... Planets, free floating in space, unconnected to any star, have been spotted by the James Webb Telescope. Just that's what we're. Oh, that's what it is. A just switch. Where did I want to pronounce it? Like just switch. Okay, but the just switch. That's appropriate. What's intriguing about the discovery is that these objects appear to be moving in pairs. Astronomers are currently struggling to explain them. Tele the telescope observed about 40 pairs. That's 80 balls. That's 40 sets of balls just floating with free space in it all over the, uh, all over God's weird vacuum and all that. Just balls, 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 balls erupting out of Orion for no reason. <laughs> In a fa like they observed about 40 pairs in a fabulously detailed new survey of the famous Orion Nebula. They've nicknamed Jupiter, or they've been nicknamed Jupiter Mass Binary Objects, or Jumbos, for short. Which is just like, that's mean. Don't be talking about a bitch's like, weight like that. They didn't know. Like, they, they don't, like, they're, they're little. Let them live their life. They have plenty of time to run around and lose some weight. There's no reason to be going that harshly. In like that, like how are you gonna call them jumbo? You don't even know that. Like you don't even know that's the biggest a planet can fucking get. You fucking assholes. Watch the like, 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 like it's so rude. You don't call black holes that, and they suck everything up. They eat more than anything, but like whatever. I got your back, jumbos. I, I I'll call you genie. How about that? I'll call you genie just so they. I I like I'm not gonna make fun of your way. I swear. Hmm. Another possibility... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, one possibility is that these objects grow out of the region of the nebula where the density of material was insufficient to make fully fledged stars. Another possibility is that they were made around stars and were then kicked out into interstellar space through various interactions. The ejection hypothesis is the favored one at the moment, said Professor Mark McCarran. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here talking, and I made that's what made you jump. That's what made you jump. So, potato. Gas, gas physicists should suggest you shouldn't be able to make. They suggest they're not saying that it, it, it can or it can't. They're suggesting that you shouldn't be able to make objects with the mass of Jupiter on their own, and we know single planets can get kicked out of star systems. But how do you kick out pairs of these things together? Right now, we don't have an answer. It's one for the fear... Theoreticians? Theori... Theoretic... I'm thinking theoreticians. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but I'm going with it. The European Space Agency, ESA, Senior science advisor told the NBC, yeah. or the BBC. I don't know why I said NBC, but whatever. Oh, these are the jumbos right here. You can see them all up in the sky. 
And some of the, I don't know why that looks so much like whatever it is or what's going on with that, but I've definitely seen at least like some. But isn't it crazy how you could just tell that they're in pairs? Look at that. They're just together. Just like, and, and like are y'all going to keep being a pair together or is one going to eat the other? devoured it so like you know all like creepy and shit like some dracula shit uh professor mccowran led the team that produced the orion survey using just switz a mar remarkable resolution infrared sensitivity the astronomers had added substantially to the the astronomers have added substantially to the information already mined by older telescopes, including Webb's direct predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. The Orion Nebula, known as its sky catalog name of Mike 42, is the nearest, largest star form region to Earth, along with a quartet of bright suns at its center called the Trapezium? Like the trapezahedron? That took me forever to learn how to pronounce? That son of a bitch? Like, hmm. Not the hunter in the dark. That was in, like, Lovecraft. You know, we're not going down that road today. Maybe a month from now, but not today. But that would make a whole lot of sense. Considering like the ozone layer is thinning out and like now the colors of the stars are starting to hit certain things and it's but... Maybe that's why that guy from Florida was showing those people getting turned into animals that way That would make a whole lot more sense especially with everything like that side the point uh, This region of space is visible to the naked eye as a smudge on the sky if you don't know it it could be found low down in the constellation of Orion, which is named after the mythical Greek hunter. The nebula forms part of the hunter's sword hanging from his belt. That almost looks like fetus and shit. Like, look at the stuff in the center. That just looks like a fucking spaceship mood ring thing or something that looks like something i'd see in a video game like uh, a skull thing what the fuck what, why am i thinking of something with skulls getting shot out was it duke nukem no that's no maybe doom but i remember something with a skull being like <laughs> it just smoked shit let's see planetary disc newborn stars in the nebula are busy making the next generation of planets that's what these are Planetary disc, which is like, what? They look like Beyblades, those fucking, like, dreidel-looking spin things that people were battling with for a minute. Tops, or what they were called when I was a kid, though. The new Jesuit Images is actually a mosaic of 700 views acquired by Webb's NERCAM. I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> instrument over a week of observations. To give a sense of scale, it would take a spaceship traveling at light speed a little over four years to traverse the entire scene. The nebula itself is about 1,400 light years away from Earth. Tucked away in this vista are thousands of young stars spanning a range of masses from, four, from 40, masses from 40 down to less than 0.1%. Wait, hold on a minute. I'm reading this all. I'm reading all fucked up, but it's probably because I just woke up. Tucked away in the vista are thousands of young stars spanning a range of masses from 40 down to less than 0 0.1 times the mass of our sun. I, I should have just went with the same shit. Uh, many of these stars are surrounded by dense disks of gas and dust, which may be forming planets. Although, in some cases, these disks are being destroyed by intense ultraviolet radiation and strong horns of the Great Wild, but I mean, like, strong winds from the most massive stars in the region. I don't know where that part came from. Uh, in particular, from the trapezium, where the trapeze, like, Trinida came from. See, like, I wasn't even expecting to see a connection with that, but I was thinking of that fucking story... For like the past week now, because of the one building, that Masonic building. I don't know why, but but there's only one light on left, and it's just like, hmm. What what happens when the light goes out finally? 
But then I thought about it, I was like, I don't want to know. But I do want to go pee. So I will return shortly. Okay, I'm back now. Fat Man is upset because I had to get up. But God damn it, I had to pee. Like, you don't understand. But he, he understands. He just didn't care. He don't give a fuck. Anyway. Where were we? Oh, we are here. Uh. Yeah, the trapezi trapezium, which technically the word I'm saying is trapezohedron, but there is a story, Haunter in the Dark, by H.P. Lovecraft, which is actually, um, yeah, I actually believe I read that story for one of the, uh, drawings I did years ago. Um, I should honestly just move those to, like, a different channel and just make a separate channel for my art, because that'd be so much more smarter. And then just stand on its own. But yeah, I remember that. And it was just like... What was it like? Dude was just a town eccentric. He liked beating in the random shit. And at one point, he climbs into this old church tower, which, you know... Supposedly, the Italians of the town and all of them would be looking and be like, what is he doing? Why are you asking about this place? You don't need to fucking know about it. He goes up in there anyway, finds a stone, and happens to just be staring at it, looking at it, and it's called the trapezohedron, and he can see all the way across in the stars with slavery and weird shit and weird creatures and all sorts of stuff. But after he looked into it or some shit, the haunter wanted to come after him. I'm not sure if it was because he didn't make a sacrifice to use his stone, or if it was because of the fact that, like, he, he, he I think it was in the wrong neighborhood, and nobody understands why he decided to come up in this some bitch. No one told him to come here. He decided to go in this building. Which was stupid, because the way everyone reacted, you should have left that shit the fuck alone. But you didn't want to leave it alone? Well, you get left alone with it, apparently. Well, not really with it. It was just waiting for a time when the lights all died out and it could traverse the darkness to get to him. Looking straight like lightning at it. But it's very interesting to me. Let's see. James Webb is opening up the infrared universe. Thank you, phone. They're opening up something. Drag the button to view. Oh, it's clear. Drag the button for views of the Orion Nebula. 1400 light years from work. Shortwave. It looks like this. But if we drag it over to the longer way. Wait. Yeah, the longer ways we can see all the glorious colors. We can see the scale and the depth. No underpainting. Underpainting. We don't apply shadows. Shadows. Loose abstract overworked perfection. You know, I'm, I'm being an extra. <laughs> but you can see the difference when you actually go in with, like, um, the ability to see even more colors. You see the importance of the colors, because you wouldn't know it was, it was that deep. And then, boom, that green comes in and just... Let you know, no, this is how I is, motherfucker. This is who I really be. This is like the first layer of paint, and then like the final third or fourth layer. Because if you go past that, then you're just asking for your shit to just start popping up. But you can see the difference, the depth, the range, the structure, all of it. You can see it all. It just looks like milk here, but here you can make out little details for little shades, the distance. All the differences. This is why colors are important. Is that fucking yellow ochre? That looks like yellow ochre. That actually looks like my Labradorite. Kind of cool though. The slider tool on the page shows the same nebula scene at a shorter and at a longer wavelength. Using the different filters in this way emphasize the items of interest. Looking at the longer wavelength version to examine the sculpted green clouds of gas that contain polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Pause are ubiquitous compounds in space produced by stars. Look at look also at the many fingered red features that dominate the background. Which is this. All of these little points right here. Like fucking like that weird red sh corrupted shit in like Dragon Age Inquisition. You know what I mean? Like, look at all of them. Look at all these points. That's what it reminds me of. It's like the, that, those weird crystal things from like Dragon Age where if you got too close to it, it turns you into a motherfucker. Mm. 
can see. Look at also how many... I got the many figured red features that dominate the background. Known as the Orion Molecule Cloud 1 outflow, this is a mass of molecular hydrogen that has been lo shocked, not locked, but shocked by the immense energy streaming away from the site of a cataclysmic collision of two giant stars. The speed of the outflow at more than 100 kilometers per second indicates the star murder occurred just a few hundred years previously. Notice the fingertips are tinged with green, a marker for gaseous iron. Yes, they are. Look at all that. That looks like a person praying almost. That's actually kind of interesting. You can see all the green on each and every tip of these almost. Look at that glow right there. That one's got a lot. That one's definitely got a lot. This is the Orion Molecular Cloud 1 Outflow. The fingertips are tinged uh, with iron. There is so much to peruse and probe in the full-size survey image, which is 21,000 by 14,500 pixels. That's a big-ass fucking picture. How would that fit in a regular computer? Oh, how would that fit in a regular computer? That's a huge ass. Those are huge ass images. Holy shit. I know what they said 700 images, but I didn't really. Holy shit. That's a big ass picture. Could you imagine trying to put that up on the wall of your house? That'd probably take up your house, your friend's house. That would probably coat the whole neighborhood. Well, no. Like, I don't know. That's a big ass. That's huge. You gotta think, oh, there are pictures that won't fit on, like, the YouTube community page because they're too big. Or they're not, or the ratio's off, which is, like, what the fuck is the ratio gotta do, they think. But this is, like, hmm. They might yank this boat off. Hmm. Might be time to pull the plug because I think they're ready. I think it's ready. Hmm. Let's see, there's so much brew, but it is the jumbos that have caught the immediate attention of astronomers. My reactions range from what to are you sure to that is just so weird to how would binaries be rejected together or ejected together? Recall Dr. Heidi Hamill, who was not on the survey team. She said there were no models of planetary system formation that predicted the ejection of binary two binary pairs of planets. But maybe all star formation regions host these double Jupiters and maybe evil double it maybe even double Neptunes and double Earths. And we just haven't had the telescope powerful enough to see them before. The multidisciplinary scientist on just what told uh, BBC News. ASA will be posting the full image of M42 on its ESA sky portal, which allows anyone to explore publicly the available ast astronomical data. Initial papers describing the survey and the jumbo discovery have been posted on the RXV, RX of, or whatever, shortly, but can also be accessed here. A guide to Orion's constellation. Here's Messia. There's Betelgeuse, the red star. There's Beatrix over here. Then here's his belt. This is the Orion Nebula, which is right in here. I want to think that the dark horse is somewhere. I don't... I can't remember where it is. Like, it could be anywhere. And look at all of these gases right here. All of this. Look at Oh, I can't, I don't know where the dark horse is. It's somewhere. But look at how vibrant this is in here. But look at these colors right here. That's what interests me. It's just like, what's going on near this belt? Hmm. I wonder if we can go to the thing. I want to see if I can go to the thing. Ooh. It's the sky. Welcome. Oh shit, welcome is an application that allows you to visualize and download public astrological. Let's do Science Explorer. Let's do Explore. Oh, 
Oh! One of the brightest nebulae in the sky. Can you like... So this is on the short wavelength. Ooh! Ooh! Idea. Uh, okay, we only go so far. Oh, hello! You scared the fuck out of me, sir. Yes, you did. All right, so here's the nebula. Baby, you need to calm down. Come here. So this is the nebula. Here's Orion. For the most part, on um, Orion's belt. It's just the subtle shit. Oh, look at that! What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Hello. Which occupants? Oh, shit. My bad. Yeah. Keep that all the way up there. That's interesting. What are these buttons? Oh, this zooms me back in. Okay, well, I'm already here, so. These are pretty. Ooh, look up here. There are some of the points we were looking at earlier. Look at all that green. That's probably where the uh, explosion probably came from. Like, it looks like. A whole bust right there. Hmm. Whoa. Our region upscaled MRI image. It's actually rather hard to see. Oh, so wait, where the fuck did I go? That almost looks like a dude riding no horse. I'm like Don Quixote, but the but the horse has got some big ass teeth on the end and a horn on on the top of his snout. Like there's the teeth, there's the head, there's its eyes all blacked out. There's the rest of its body. Then there's this dude with his head kind of floating because I can see his cap right here. A small like little cowl around his neck and shit, riding as he's coming up, holding a fucking Doc Holiday with a barrel too long at the end. God damn, I got like such a weird imagination. I swear. This is, why is there a cut? It seems like it'll only like define certain images in here. Damn scientists have used allergy collect. Well, like hate the pro protoplanet disk surrounding a young star. They've accomplished this feat with a cross disciplinary expert analysis which including key input. It looks like a watercolor painting. It's actually rather pretty. Oh, that's too much. There we go. There is something absolutely romantic about this image that I just cannot get over. Like, look at how gorgeous all of this is. Looking like absolute ghosts with death. I swear this is almost like a watercolor painting. And then this shows the... Okay, so this shows the entire region how it looks again. Once again, it looks like some dude just on a horse. I 
Like, you wouldn't, like, red thing on his head. Riding a fucking bird. There's the beak. There's the eyeball. His head. Wings flapping this way. Not necessarily this way. I can see the trail for its tail right here. He's got, like, these butterfly wings on him. He's holding something right here. And it looks like a saw. Or maybe a scythe. On the side of it, just hanging off. I have such a weird imagination, I swear. But I love these images. Like, oh, look. Stuff's going out this way, too. A little bit of green right there. Stuff like this is so pretty. Like, look at all of this background, this detail, these, these gorgeous colors. All of this, this examination of depth. Beyond you know, what we think. It is. It just looks like a lair. It, it just looks like one fucking thing. It is like, no, there is so much space in between. Like, look at dude's shoulder armor right here. Or maybe that's a horse's face. Like, look at that. There's now, there's an eyeball with raging, uh, fiery shit erupting now. Being like, Nyeh. It's just interesting as fuck. I like it. I like it. Okay, so that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.